all right you python game developers welcome back to this python pi game video series in which we are creating a space invaders game so in the last video we created multiple bullets so instead of shooting just one bullet we can shoot multiple bullets at the enemy and we don't have to you know just just shoot one bullet during the whole game but as you can see our bullet is going through the enemy and it's not colliding and nothing is happening when the bullet hits the enemy not the score is increasing and the enemy is also at the same place it's not respawning anywhere which we want so in this video we are going to learn about the collision concept how to make sure that the two objects have collided and that's a very important concept in gaming so what we'll be doing is that let me just actually reload this game so that we can uh, see the bullet and the enemy properly so what i'm going to be doing is we are going to calculating the distance between the bullet and the enemy and if the distance is short enough then we are going to conclusively say that the bullet has collided so the bullet has an x and y coordinates when it goes up through the screen and similarly this enemy also has an x and y coordinate when it goes through the screen on left right or up and down so we are going to use all of these four coordinates that is the x coordinate and the x coordinate of our bullets and the y coordinates of both our bullet and our enemy to calculate the distance between them so now what i want you guys to do is go to google and type in distance between two coordinates and it's going to take you to this website mathplanet.com and over here there is this equation which says distance equals to x coordinate minus x coordinates of other object squared plus y coordinate of one object and y coordinate of other object square and then the square root of the whole thing and this x2 and x1 doesn't matter whatever is at front because at by the end of the day we are squaring this so obviously you must have learned this in school or in college but if you haven't don't worry about it just go through this article a little bit you just need to execute this code in this equation in our python so even if you don't understand what it, this is doing we are going to learn how to actually implement our equation in python so that is going to be really helpful for you guys so keep this equation in mind and let's go back to our code and just beneath this fire underscore bullet function we are going to create a new function and we're going to call it is collision so this function is basically going to help us with define whether a collision between the bullet and an enemy has occurred or not so it's going to take four values the x coordinate of the enemy the y coordinate of the enemy the x coordinate of the bullet and similarly the y coordinate of our bullet and now we are going to create a variable known as distance so this distance will store the distance between the bullet and our enemy and how do we calculate this distance obviously using this equation so distance equals to and then we are going to do a square root so to do a square root or do any kind of mathematic operations you need to import something known as math so if you go up I haven't imported math yet so I'm just going to write import math so I'm going to import that and then first of all we want to do the square root so let me go over here and just write math dot sqrt so this is the basically the function or the method for doing square root and then apply some brackets now we need the enemy x and the bullet x and we need to subtract it according to the formula but before even that we need to square it so if you go back to our equation you can see after the square root the x2 minus x1 is being squared so we also need to implement that mathematical formula so we are just going to write math dot pow so this stands for power and then it requires two values the x and the y so we're going to do that so we are going to just write comma 2 because we want it to be squared and then over here we are going to give it the value of enemy x minus enemy y all right so this is looking good we have executed the first part of our equation now we have to execute the second part of the equation that is plus y2 minus y1 and the squared so we are going to go back over here and uh, inside our math dot bar so this is this part math dot bar x2 and this is enemy uh, not enemy y this is bullet x sorry about that and then we are just going to write plus and then we are going to write math dot power again because we need another power and it requires two uh, two values first is the path value so we want it to be squared again and then we just need to subtract the enemy a, enemy y so enemy y minus bullet y and this should give us the value obviously we need to close this math math dot square root so we are going to apply another bracket but looks like it's an extra bracket so what we are doing is math dot pow we are doing x2 minus x1 or x minus x1 minus x2 doesn't matter squared it and then math dot pow y2 minus y1 squared so just to make sure that these two are separate we are going to apply another bracket over here 
so I'm gonna also do this with this one let's not uh, blunder all right so there is some problem over here so this is the problem so let's apply a bracket over here instead of that and this is looking pretty good so now what we are gonna do is we are gonna write an if condition if this distance is less than 27 pixels then return us the value of true that is the collision has occurred else return us the value of false so we're gonna write f condition and return false I mean we didn't need to write this if condition we could have just returned false over here but I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood all right let's format it properly obviously we need to format anything in PyCharm make sure you press ctrl alt plus l l is for uh, I don't know loser something <laughs> So make sure you press Ctrl Alt plus L if you're using PyJam. It should format everything beautifully. All right, so our is collision function is complete. So now what we are gonna do is, we are gonna scroll down and we are gonna write inside our while infinite loop over here, just below this enemy X or the, even the bullet X, we are gonna add a comment that's gonna stand for collision so that we know that we are writing the code for collision. And over here, we can just check whether a collision is happening or not. So I'm just going to create a variable called collision and then I'm going to call this is collision function. And over here we are going to set the value of enemy x, enemy y. And over here in all of this code inside this while loop we are manipulating the value of x and y of enemy and the bullet. So this is the right place to call this is collision function. So over here we are just going to write bullet x, comma bullet y. All right, so this is looking good. So this is collision is going to store the value of true and false. And if the collision has occurred, it's going to store the value of collision of true in collision. All right. So this is looking good. And then we're going to write a condition if collision. So what do you want us to do if the collision is occurring? Basically, that is what our program is asking. So what do we want after a collision has occurred? So the first thing that we want is to reset the bullet to its starting point. So we are going to reset the bullet Y at 480. And then because the bullet is not being shown anymore, we want to change the state of the bullet to ready. So let's change the state of the bullet to ready by writing bullet state equals to ready. And then the last thing we want to do is obviously increase the score. So I'm just going to create a new variable. Let's say, let's actually just go over here so that it's close by and we are going to write the value of score equals to zero. All right. So this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to just scroll down and over here, I'm going to write score score why am i missing the variable of score square plus equals to one so this will increase the value by one every time we hit our enemy and after that we are just going to print out our score so i'm just going to print it out on the screen so now let's just run our program and see if everything is working or not so i'm just going to run the main program and over here we are going to shoot our bullets and hopefully if it hits and i'm not a bad player as you can see the score increased by one so let's try to hit it again and as you can see the score is increasing by one but when we are not hitting it the score is not increasing so let's try to make our score at least five all right all right so the score is five so what one thing you must have noticed is that the enemy is still on its current path and it's not respawning to its default location so we need to fix that so what we are going to do is we are going to write change the value of player x uh, the enemy x and the enemy y over here so i'm just going to scroll up and check out where we have declared the value of enemy x and enemy y so i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to paste this inside our if collision obviously like this ca code can be optimized we can create a new function for all of this stuff that is happening over here but maybe we can do that in the later videos all the optimization classes and functions we'll see whether we do that or not because this is not such a complicated program but maybe we will so now what will happen is that the enemy x and the enemy y will get restarted or respawn to a default location and will respawn to a random integer that is between 0 to 800 and y is 50 to 150 obviously we have already discussed what this does it basically gives a default position to the enemy so let's give it a shot again and we're going to run the main again and see if it works. So let me just wait for it. All right. So our enemy is actually just going back to its uh, new location. All right. Let's just wait for the enemy to come back a little bit down so that we know that our code is working properly. 
So let's shoot it. All right, so our game is respawning properly. Our enemy is respawning properly and it looks good. So one thing you might have noticed that when it comes to this right hand side of the screen, it just drops down. Even if you're trying it on your own, if an enemy respawns towards the right hand side of that window, of our window, it just goes down. So why is that happening? That is happening because when we respawn our enemy or just be, when we are creating the enemy, we are giving it a value of zero to 800. And, but inside our code we have written in over here that if the enemy X is greater than 736, make sure you change its Y value. So therefore, whenever our enemy is respawning with a greater value than 736, it's immediately going down without a chance to go left. That's why we need to make sure that over here, when we are creating the enemy, that we don't increase the value till 800, only till 736. And just for safety, we are gonna write 735. So obviously we need to make sure that the 735 also goes in when a collision has occurred. So I'm just gonna copy that over here too. All right, so this looks good. We have also fixed an error. So this is looking pretty good. All right. So, all right, the enemy is respawning properly. Let me just shoot it again. All right. So, all right guys, so this is pretty much it for this video. In the next video, we are gonna learn how to create multiple enemies. So right now there is only one enemy, so the game is pretty easy. You can just play it really easy. And actually it's pretty <laughs> fun to play while I'm recording this video, I'm also playing. But anyway guys, uh, let me just recap actually quickly so that you guys can understand. So if you already understand the video, just go to the next video, but for people who have not understood it properly, so have, we have created a function called is collision where we have four coordinates, two of enemy coordinates and two of bullet coordinates. And we have used all of these four coordinates in this formula, which we got from typing in distance between two coordinates, this formula, and then we try to execute this formula inside our code. Obviously, before you start doing this math.squared, make sure that you import math. And after that, we made the square root. And then inside this, we using the dot power function, we squared it just like we have done in this uh, formula x2 minus x square squared. So we needed to make sure that we squared it and make sure that the brackets are correctly placed because if you guys are typing the code, uh, it might like it might you might mess up somewhere. So make sure you guys are typing this code properly line by line. All right, obviously I'll upload all of this code on GitHub. So you'll find it somewhere over there. And uh, by the end of the series, I'll upload it after recording all the videos. So you can wait for it a little bit or you can find it in description or attachments or something. So mat.power enemy x minus bullet x, you guys understand all of this stuff. And then how this 27 number, number came to be. So I just tried and tested what was the proper number for distance between enemy and bullet to call it a collision. And I just by trial and testing, I came on this number. If the distance between the bullet and the enemy is less than 27, I'm gonna call it a collision. And then if the collision has occurred, it will return true. And obviously we are calling this function over here if collision. So if a collision has occurred, what do we want from a program? We first of all, we want to reset the Y of the bullet to 480. That is the starting position of the spaceship. And then we are gonna change the state of equals to ready because you can't see the bullet anymore. And when you can't see the bullet anymore, the state is ready. And then we increase the score by one and we printed out the score. And then we made sure that the enemy respond to its new location. All right guys, so this is basically a way to, just to track back a little bit. This is just a way to kill the enemy and then make sure that we also create a new enemy. All right, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. Thank you for hanging out. In the next video, we are going to learn how to create multiple enemies. So I'll see you over there.